Okay, this portion of the 1040C, I want to cover a little about uh, motor service and belt drive maintenance, motor bearings, and drives. You know, probably one of the most misunderstood things in our industry is the motor applications. In a previous video, I talked about the orientation of the shaft was very important. There's also some other factors that comes into the motors and that is weather protection. If a condenser fan motor is not protected from water going down into the bearings, whether it be sleeve or bearing or, or ball bearings, they're going to get burned. The water will get in there and will run them. There is a rain, rain shield in many applications that protects or helps prevent that. It's not the 100% uh, fail safe but make sure that the motor is made for that particular application. Many motors will actually have a drain plug that has to be removed depending upon what the application is. You have to look to see which drain plug that would be. So don't forget to do that in the installation of a uh, repaired part. Now, motor bearings can be a field in itself. Most of the smaller motors, we don't replace the bearings in. Ball bearings can be replaced. Sleeve bearings is very unusual to replace the sleeve bearings in a, in a small motor. Ball bearings, the cost of removing them and the labor cost involved is usually cheaper just to get another motor, so to speak. Now, how do you lubricate a motor? Well, you do not want to use motor oil. Anybody know why? Yeah. Like, like, yeah. like an automotive, yeah. like, like an automotive. Yeah. Car. The, the wire wears out. The velocity of it, the velocity. How about yeah. detergent? It's detergent. It's a detergent oil. Okay. okay, the detergent will actually stop up the pores of a bearing in a motor application. Sleeve bearings, they, if you will, wick the oil to the bearing. If you have that detergent, Y'all know what dried up detergent does. Okay, that's what happens. It can actually keep that oil from getting to the place that it needs to be. So you want to make sure that you use the right kind of oil for that lubrication. Many motors will have many motors will actually have a port. I don't know if you can see this with the camera, but there is a plug here and here that can be removed and a few drops of oil can be put into there. You know, you can also put too much oil in one. If you put too much oil in it, it can get into the windings. It, most of the time the oil itself will not hurt the windings. It's about two or three drops. So two or three drops, enough to keep it lubricated. How often do these that, that do need lubrication, how often should they be lubricated? About once every six months. Yeah. Okay. You know, a good way is on a spring tune-up or a winter tune-up. If, if it has, right. If it has uh, uh, oil ports, then mm -hmm. that's the time to oil it. A lot of motors don't have that anymore. They're permanently uh, lubricated. Sealed. They're sealed. Now, if you over grease or over oil a motor, that grease will go into the windings, and grease collects dirt. Dirt's a good insulator. You add the two together, you've got hot spots in the motor due to the to the oil and grease that's, that shouldn't be there. So don't get carried away with that, okay? Uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the different types of, of drives that we see out there. Number one, most of our motors today in residential applications are direct drive. This is a direct drive motor. The fan blade is connected directly to the shaft, as you see, the squirrel cage blower, but it is a direct drive. There is no connection that's uh, between it and the device that it's operating. But that doesn't just limit the description of direct drive. Direct drive can also be done through a coupling. Now let me show you an application such as that. This is a circulator pump for a hot water system, and 
inside of here, Ricky, I don't know if you can see that or not, and I'll let folks look around with this in just a few minutes, but there is a spring coupling <laughs> built in here that isolates the motor from the pump, gives it a little springy action, it, it allows for a little bit of misalignment between the shaft, the, the uh, directions of the shaft, and unfortunately, it can only take up so much misalignment. If it's uh, very much out of line, it will fail. There are rubber insulators, if you will. These are called resilient. This is called a resilient mounted motor, which actually has a rubber piece here. If those have become deteriorated, this motor can drop. And if you replace this coupling and not take care of that, you'll be back in a few months to do it again. So look at that too. And one one thing that happens with this application is people will over lubricate the motor and it will get into this rubber uh, support and run it. So keep that in mind too. We're going to set this off on the side. So that, 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 that rubber arm thing acts like a, uh, a motor mount for a motor. It is. It, it, it takes some of the vibration. Uh, uh, it helps eliminate some of the vibration throughout the system. So you want to know if you over lubricate it until it's too late. Yeah. You know, just yeah. Basic tool well, it'll, most of these uh, motors will tell you about how much to add. It'll tell you to add so many drops or so on. Okay. While we're talking about drives, let's go to a different type of drive. This is going to be a belt drive. I want to touch on the uh, sheaves and the uh, belts a little bit. These sheaves that I have here are adjustable. You can see how. I'm actually opening open it up. This determines the speed of the driven uh, component if this is on the drive side. It's not usual, but most of the time the adjust uh, the pulley that's adjustable is usually on the, the drive, not the driven pulley. Okay? Now, this is not a way to adjust the belt. The belt should be adjusted with one inch of deflection. In other words, when you mash on the belt, you should be able to mash it about one inch. If it's less than that, you're going to run the bearings of either the motor or the drive or both. Okay? Uh, how this is adjusted determines how fast the motor is going to turn the driven pulley. The motor speed not, uh, is usually not changeable unless it's a uh, VFD or something of that nature. But <coughs> to determine that, you can actually take the fan RPM. You can determine the fan RPM by taking the diameter of the motor pulley, multiply that by the motor RPM, and divide that by the diameter of the fan pulley. Now, how did I know that? I looked in the book. <laughs> okay. Now, keep in mind, a little bit of change in the speed has a large change in the amount of horsepower needed to drive that, that device. So, how do you know that you're not over amping the motor? It's only one way. You have to check it with an amp meter while it's running with the doors closed. Another thing you can calculate, most fans will have their fan curve and it will tell you how much air under the right static pre uh, pressure that it will move. So it's not something that you just go out there and start changing. If you see one of these that's come loose, know what it's supposed to be set at. Okay. Now, these do wear out. We know belts wear out, but these also wear out. If, if the belt rides correctly, it will ride on this part right along in here. It's called the apex of the pulley that it should ride on. And when you're figuring how long the belt needs to be or, or uh, when it's adjusted properly, it should be based snug. on the apex. Will it be snug? It'll be snug. Like I said, you'll have about one inch of deflection on a uh, belt that's, that's tightened correctly. Real quick on the belts, 
In our industry, we don't see as many belts, like I said, in the residential, but they're out there in the commercial end, very much so, and will be. The belts are sized either 3L, 4L, 5L, or AB type figures. The length is a figure behind there, like this one is a 430. That has to do with the length. The 4L has to do with the width and the configuration of the V. Now, a B belt, A and B belts are considered more on the industrial commercial side. The 4L, 3L, 5L, that's more on the light commercial residential side. Just because you have a belt that it seems to fit correctly does not mean that it is the right belt for that application. Okay? Uh, when replacing belts, you'll see a lot of people that will just pop them on. If you've got to stretch that belt to, doing the, to the point of, of uh, doing that, you probably run the belt because these have cords in them. If you break that cord, that belt's not going to last. I do see the application of belt dressing from time to time. I don't like that because that is a very temporary thing. If you have a belt that's slipping, either the pulley has gone bad or the belt itself has gone bad. It's best to go on and that belt dressing is a very temporary application. So where would that metal pulley, where would it wear it? It's going to wear it down on what they call the apex. Mm -hmm. right that there. metal actually wear it? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. It does wear it. But, uh, Does that bruise us on it? No. In fact, let me pass this around. You can see it's, it's, it's smooth in there, but it is, if you'll look at it, you'll actually see a little bit of change. Someone got, some got a channel that's got like a V shape, and others yeah, got a U shape. It's a V. It's a V. But if it, if it does wear, it does wear out. Like okay. Uh, it's good to know the fan laws. I don't want to go into a whole lot of detail on that, but if you'll look into your books, you'll find out that there's some things about fan laws. A little bit of change in motor speed can make a lot of change in the performance of the system. Don't uh, take this stuff lightly just because it's been set one way. If you're doing, if you're having problems, if you're having to diagnose, look at those speeds. Look at what it should be. I, 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 I promise you I have gone back on installations that they were never set up properly and the customer had constant problems but when we go back and we look we find out that the, the uh, air speeds were never set up properly or the motor speeds were never set up properly and it's a simple fix. You know it doesn't cost a whole lot to adjust that. Fix it in circulation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, in this particular book it's on nine 79. Any questions? Okay, that should that should conclude.